Hey, it's been a while, but welcome to Vice Grip Lodge. We've got to modify a little trailer down here to get it ready for a drag and drive event over on the Vice Grip Garage channel. Lots of work to do. Let's get started. So like the guy was saying, we're going to be doing this drag and drive event with the independent Chevelle, actually. And we're going to need to pull a trailer behind that because the trunk is just full of fuel cells and gigamagoos and gigawatt machines and whatever. There's stuff. But where you need a jack and jack stands and fluids and tools and you've got to carry our drag radials and you name it. So we've got this little trailer here I'm going to show you. And we're going to try to modify it to put like a carrier, rack, cage thing, and then also something that we can hook our tires onto and maybe they'll stay on going down the highway. Probably not though. Yeah, fishing is what I'm doing here. Clearly fellers between Vice Grip Garage, Vice Grip Lodge, and my travel schedule, I got none free time to get the tackle box out. But thanks to Fishing Clash, I'm still able to get my fishing in with this game here on the pocket computer box. It's a free game. You can find it for Android and iOS. There's a link right down there in the description to check it out. Fishing Clash is a fun interactive fishing game where you can continue to level up, try multiple different locations, different rods, and catch all sorts of different fish. The fish you catch, you can collect them. You can try to beat your own records and even try to beat boss fish. You can even compete and go head to head against other fishermen throughout different events every single week and win. You might even find yourself up against this guy. Now, if you're new to the game, Fishing Clash is gonna let a guy help you out by giving you a gift code. You're gonna get a three star rod, one mythical lure, 50 luck power ups, help you catch that big fish, and 30 weight power ups. They get a little bit bigger, you know what I mean? All this is a $20 value. You're gonna get that for free. All you have to do is enter the code FISHWITHVICE. To use the code FISHWITHVICE is simple. Just click up there in the right-hand corner, select gift codes, enter FISHWITHVICE, and boom, collect a $20 value for free. So what are you waiting for? Click that link down in the description there and get some fishing done. Might even see you out there on a boat somewhere. I don't know. So this is what I got right here. It's a late 70s, early 80s Coleman. Coleman actually made this. I think it says it somewhere on here. Um, yeah, right there, Coleman Caboose. Kind of a neat little thing. It's like a weird plastic. It's extremely, extremely light. And then this lid, if you pull the pins, it'll flip up or tilt either way, or you could take the whole thing off. It's waterproof. Does pretty good. I've already put new tires and bearings on it. That was years ago though. Most people buy like a motorcycle trailer. It goes behind a motorcycle and modify them, but they're several thousand dollars to be honest, unless you get a smoking deal on a used one. This here was 200 bucks. I actually bought this years ago, like three or four years, because we always wanted to go on Hot Rod Drag Week in an old Chevelle that I had, 68 or 69. But it never happened, so we just scooted it under the deck and it sat there forever. But I'm glad I kept it because I think it's going to work out really good. It's a nice low profile, it's extremely light, and, you know, it was the cheapest thing that I could find. So I've kind of been laying some stuff out here. I wonder if a guy could just make a rectangle as kind of the base, go from there. That's what I'm doing. I'm going to use this strap here and cut it into sections. There'll be one here, two, three, and four, and I'll drill some holes in them with the press. And then we'll make the, a mirror plate that goes underneath, and we'll sandwich those together. And then I'll just put a little standoff on this, one or two inches, and that'll get us a perimeter here. And then maybe run a stick down it, you know, above this and above this. I've got, I think, 40 foot of this outside somewhere but where it gets a little tricky is we got to haul the slicks and what i'm thinking for that is the top one we're going to do two of them are you following along there's two of them so on that second one we shoot off see 
we're shooting off. And I'm going to put a plate or something over here. And then that tire can come on and bolt up to this plate. And then those tires, one here, one here will hang off the front. And I need them on the front for tongue weight. Again, this thing is extremely light. I mean, the whole thing's got to be maybe 110 pounds, if that. So we're going to need to put all the weight up here. Now, I do have some, I don't know what it's called, chicken wire, corrugated steel stuff. Maybe put in the bottom of this, but I don't know that we're going to need it. If I have two bars going down here, I think I could pretty much fit anything in here that I need to. Maybe I will put a little bit of corrugated steel up front if we want to put like fuel jugs or something in here. And maybe I even put another bar across this way. I don't know. We're getting crazy now. Maybe I put a bar across this way so the fuel jug's sitting here nice. And then this is for whatever, cold snacks and more stuff like that. But anywho, I'm going to keep cutting steel. We're going 34 inches wide. Cut the line. Okay, so I need one more of those. And then we're going to figure out our length. I'll probably burn in a frame first. And then we can figure out the delta for our standoffs here. We'll start getting into that stuff. I got updates. These will be the plates. That'll go underneath here, see? And then we'll put these little standoffs up like that. And that'll sit on that. This is about two and one sixteenth of an inch. These are three and two thirty seconds, give or take a foot. And this is gonna be about 42 liters between here and here. And I changed my mind. I don't think I'm gonna put a plate on the inner side because we've got some shapes, shapes to this, see? So, I had to kind of cheat this forward a little bit, but on the inside, it's going to be more advantageous to use big washers to suck up the nut on the inside, just so we can try to follow the curve best we can in there. And like I say, I'm going to get the bottom frame done first, just so I could lay it on here and hook the peepers into it and kind of get a better idea. We're just designing as we go here, pretty much. Here's that steel I got. Of course, I buy most of my steel out of the scrap bin, so everything's been cut, so this isn't wide enough. But what I'm thinking is, can a guy make a rack, you know, up to here, at least, for my fuel jugs? And I think what I could do is just lay that, that stuff over there on the outside rail. I'll have two going down the center and one out here, and that'll be plenty. And then I could just put one bar across the top. And that way those jugs I could just set in here. So I think I'm going to make this, I don't know, yay-ish high. Them shouldn't go nowhere, I don't think. And then back here could be whatever, camp chairs, stuff like that, like I was saying earlier. So let me uh, make a couple cuts. I got these. Again, these were already cut. Someone just didn't buy them. I think they're 10-foot sticks, something like that. No, it's got to be bigger than that. I'm eight foot, so 14 foot sticks. Got her in this cheapy little hobo freight jig thing. It's about worthless, but helps me get closest to the right angle. If guy doesn't have that, let's use a speed square. Or they even have big megaments you can put in there and get you close, you know, eyeball it, whatever. Well, we got framage to this particular unit. That's kind of what, well, it's not centered up on here or whatever, but that's kind of what we got going on. Grabbed a standard issue fuel jug here, and I went back and forth and forth and back on whether or not I should put it this way, because it'd be easier to strap going through the handle than up and over. But then this is over here, kind of popped out. So I'm thinking if a guy puts it on like that, and they can bring a strap through here, through this handle, over through the other one and down and whatnot. So I think I'm going to measure up and we'll put a bar across here all the way and that'll be the floor for our corrugated steel and then on the second level we'll have of course another bar right here to keep that in place. So I'm going to one across here and then two following these lines right there as well and then that'll just be that open back but it's actually 
quite a bit of work once you get into it. It's a lot of snatch, measuring and other stuff. There we go. That's kind of what a guy was thinking anyway. Trucking right along, gonna flip it over and probably just grind the top out. I don't care about the rest of it. And then we'll go ahead and lay that corrugated steel in here and slice that up. I just gotta leave the corners open because we gotta have some posts. I think I'm just gonna do like one in the center and one on each corner, it should be plenty. I've got some weird hex pipe scrap that I found just to add something a little bit different for the center section there. Might look pretty cool. Guys got this snagged in here now. And that's pretty much exactly what I was going for there. Snip the corners off, see, so we can get some posts in there. And then I had, to, this is actually two pieces. And if you look close, oh, here it is. You can see the heat from the bottom side where I just, zzz, zzz, you know, brought them together. So it looks like one sheet anyway. Test fit the jug. Well, that still fits, so that's good, I guess. Now, it's time to get the legs on this, or the standoffs, or whatever we want to call them. Probably go ahead and get that on now. Then we can start building the top part, but I want to get the legs on this first before it gets so darn heavy, a guy just can't move it. My back is what I'm saying. My back is... It's not doing good. Got these zinged up a little bit. Still got to get the flap escalator on them and clean it up a little bit. Got to adjust my gas. Getting a little splatter going on. This one here, I had to put some angle edge on her because the plastic in the old Coleman caboose is just, uh, dipping on me. So I'm trying to keep that somewhat flat, flush level when I put the cage thing on here now I got to try to gently set that on there align all these up appropriately I got to have it kind of towards this side over here where it's more flat and then I could probably tack weld it take it off put it on my welding table which is just you know some 18 gauge metal on a sawhorse thing sure that'll work by the way I found the this has like a serial number and everything down here, and uh, it's from 1982. I'll be dipped. It should work. Loosely mocked up there, sure. Back here, that's a bigger dip than guy anticipated, but I'm thinking we'll be able to make that up when we bolt it together. It'll suck a lies and maybe bring some of that curvature back out, but just gotta get the measuring tape out and measure how many pounds this is on both corners here and draw lines or something. I don't know. I might just score it and then just put it up on the table and burn them in. It's going to be close enough. Guys starting to lay in the top ring now. And they'll just be 45s on the back here. And then this will be straight because remember we got to shoot off. Over here we've got 5.5 backspacing on the belay specialty wheels plus we gotta i don't know string bob this or something figure out the distance from here to here but also make sure that we mark it here so that this doesn't move when we get this number because what i don't want to have happen is those nice wheels you know digging into this over and over and over every single bump we hit but I also don't want them out here doing the jiggle john. So, I don't know. Kind of just procrastinating at this point. Well, guy uh, put a square of speeds up here. And I think that's how I'm going to measure this. Now I know that this is the edge. Maybe I could add a quarter inch back here for that or three eighths. And then I need to come at least five and a half inches out. Subtract an eighth inch for a plate to mount that wheel. And that should be kind of what the front bar is. This is just another sidebar, but I just started, you know, a guy gets to, can, I, can a guy eyeball this for a little bit is what I was thinking, you know. So 
it's probably going to look something like that, which looks super dorky. But if you imagine a wheel split in half out here, you know, 10 inch wide wheel, it's about, you know, that'll probably do the thing, I'm guessing. Well, I think I got it using backspacing plus this minus the plate thickness yada yada that should be where the tire is hanging once it's mounted to the plate out here pretty close to that hinge but i just didn't want it digging in there how's the cart running Good. Um, i just saw some mousies down there in the junkyard some mousies yeah did you chase them away i tried to but you they went under the, the truck you should take motor out there with you I don't know. Go have them chase them off. Parenting tip 6009. Use these little cheap CB radios and you can keep tabs on your children when they're running around the yard and whatnot. These are gonna be the little upper spacer thingies from the you know the two different levels. I don't know. I found it in the scrap bin, looked pretty cool. Hexa hex one, two, three, four, five, six six-sided thing whatever shape octagon is that what it is i don't know anyway we're going to use these things octa is eight i just realized and put them into the corners here and zzz, get this up in the air going to use some mega mumps and just try to get them you know because they can't be can't have the other angles on it yeah there we go that's what a feller was looking for. Seems to be really, really sturdy so far. These belay tires and wheels are super light. They're like 30 pounds each maybe. So it's not like there's a ton of weight that's gonna be coming down on this. Cause some of you might be thinking, does this need to be gusseted or something like that? But I really don't think so with how close this is to here comparative to the overall length. I think that'll probably be just fine. And these are solid steel, of course, they're not hollow. So I'm gonna find some plates, get that welded on. And I got an idea out here for that. And then gotta get this thing painted up. I guess we could try to put the fuel can in. There we go. Just like that. Get two of them in there, maybe even three. Nice little tray and then plenty of storage back here for whatever. This is a spring perch bracket, but look at this. I'll be dipped. It's not perfectly centered on the wheel, but a guy can get two bolts through there. Or I guess if I can't, for whatever reason, some of the milling is different on belay wheels. Then we can at least get one. So all I gotta do is put this plate on to where the holes are like this. I can just hang it and zzz, And then that'll be my wheel hanger offer, holder upper, upper. Really cranked the welder and stuck the dimes down on these plates here because that's the part that a guy you know, we really need this to hang on there. Uh, you can see if we got pretty good heat in there other than the one side that was uh, tacked. A little bit crooked, but it's hard because everything's on an angle. And Well, I'm just getting tired of it at this point, but I think that's going to work, fellas, actually. Let me go grab a wheel. We'll throw it on, bolt it in, just see what it looks like. Sure. I don't got her tightened up because this is 475,000 degrees so you know it's ow hot but if that were to come in an inch or so I think that's going to be pretty darn good and we're staying away from that hinge later down there right on so it's uh pitch black too cold uh, tonight and then do it outside because look at my floors Dang it, gonna be sweeping all night. But tomorrow we'll hit her with some paint. And then all I gotta do is just 
drill a few holes, bolt this in with some grade eight hardware all the way around, and we're done. Got it propped up in the paint booth here. Got to do this outside, too much overspray inside, but the wind is fighting me. Got some self-etching primer down, and now I'm just coming over with this uh, gloss black, but the wind is carrying a lot of this out, so it's gonna take 58 million coats, but we'll get it there. It doesn't have to be perfect, just trying to keep it from rusting. I don't know. We'll call that good enough, you know? It's looking pretty good. Not bad for no body work or anything like that. Sure. Let this thing dry and then we can pop it on and see what it looks like. Well, I hadn't realized till just now. I don't have grade eight in the particular size of these bits that I bought. I got these for a quarter each at the metal store. They were just some old, well, I'll show you what they look like. I must have got them at an auction or something, but they're for drill presses, wax tip, and they're oiled. Anywho, long story short, I got grade five. So we're gonna go with that. That should be plenty, there's eight of them, right? So, sure. What? Four of you fellers were wondering, you know, what this looks like. That's what it looks like on the inside. You can see some rubber bushings down there. So she's watertight again, which is really nice. Just pull these pins off. I think one of us will just get on each side and flip her off and that's about it. Got this all bolted in. She snugged up real nice and tight. Pop that on one more time and I think we're good to go. I also wired in uh, brake lips on this. I forgot about that. We were pretty set on going a couple years back. No, oh, it was like five. But it just never, I think I couldn't get time off work or something like that. But I'm glad I kept this little thing around. Well, fellers and fellettes, we knocked it out. Looks pretty darn good. And I think it's going to work just fine. Plenty of room back there. That's our bigger cooler on wheels. Yeah, we could get a couple of camp chairs in there and some stuff like that. Can't find my other gas jug, but I have one that's identical. And then, of course, we'll end up with our slicks on here and then our Pittsburgh tools and jack and jack stand on the inside. A couple other things. I think we're ready to go. This should be done, done. Well, that's going to do it for our little trailer build here. Thanks for watching another episode of Ice Grip Lodge. And be sure to check out Fishing Clash down there in the description. And a big thank you for them for sponsoring another video. Hit that subscribe button, ring that bell. That does something here an hour in the future. We'll see you next time.